In 63 AD, ancient Romans crowded the Circus Maximus to witness the world's most exciting sport event. From the battlefield to the race course, brave gladiators came to prove their driving skills, driving chariots of wood and powered by living horses in a colorful spectacle of speed. After 19 centuries, the basic elements of the race are unchanged. There's still the crowd, the excitement, and the driver. He dresses differently, his chariot is made of metal, and beneath the hood is more horsepower than any ancient Roman charioteer ever dreamed of controlling. But all modern-day competitors who drive the Indianapolis Motor Speedway share the same problem. Here then in this great modern arena, brave men and their 20th century chariots compete in time-honored tradition, providing a spectacle of speed that has changed very little since the long-ago days of the Circus Maximus. But the ancient chariots of wood have been replaced by race cars made of metal, a magic 20th century metal, strong, bright, and shining aluminum. At modern Harvey Aluminum plants, the race car has its beginning. Born of fire, the light, bright metal is first purified, then poured out, ready to be molded into many shapes. Again, Harvey Aluminum passes through the flames as elements for modern living begin to form. Used in an ever-increasing variety of applications, aluminum is constantly tested as a new, light, but strong structural metal. In their Southern California speed shop, radically designed race cars begin to take form. Pioneering a new low silhouette in speed, the company has successfully competed at Indianapolis and now returns, ready to continue a trend toward cars with a lower center of gravity, rear engine mounting, and lighter weight. Compactness is really the key word for the Harvey aluminum design. Consider the use of hollow frame members as a means for piping water from the engine to the radiator and back. Radical new 12-inch wheels are used for the first time. And the car, a 1963 reality, only waits to be proven on the speedway. On the first day of qualifying, Parnelli Jones takes the green flag signal from starter Pat Vidan. The fastest man on the track in practice, he braves gusty winds and turns 151.153 miles per hour. It's a new qualifying record, evidence that the traditional Indianapolis race car will be hard to beat. In this year, many new designs are offering stiff competition to the well-proven Indianapolis Roadster. Jim Clark of Scotland drives a Lotus Ford, another car with engine in the rear. It qualifies easily at a speed of 149.75 miles per hour. Don Branson, one of racing's greatest qualifiers, takes four smooth laps. He captures second best time of the day with 150.188 miles per hour. Roger Ward has driven the 500 12 times, has two wins, one second, and a third to his credit. The 42-year-old charioteer shows the rookies how to take four smooth laps at high speed. He qualifies with the fastest speed of his career, 149.80 miles per hour, as other drivers strain to build speed in practice sessions. But his affection for the radical knee-high design wins over all obstacles. <laughs> 
While others laugh at the fat little wheels and the flat top, the elder statesman of racing scoots it around the track like a roller skate. He qualifies at 149.002 miles per hour. The new design is proven without a doubt. And it's Dwayne Carter's turn to smile. The starting field is almost filled when rookie Al Miller takes his turn on the last day of qualifying. Driving a second Harvey Aluminum Special using 15-inch wheels, he starts a run with very little practice time. In one of those magic moments that comes to race drivers, he breaks the 150 mile an hour barrier on his first lap. The car handles smoothly as he completes qualification. Four laps at 149.613 miles per hour average. Many veterans unable to match the speed are sidelined for the big race, but rookie Al Miller has earned a second starting spot in the 1963 Indianapolis 500. Two positions in 33, Dwayne Carter, Al Miller, and the Harvey Aluminum Specials are ready for the spectacle of speed. The magic moment, the start of the race, has never changed in 19 centuries. At the starting line, Dwayne Carter is greeted by fellow competitors as Al Miller waits to start his first 500. The hearts of 300,000 spectators beat a little faster. The big moment, the start of the race, is here. The pace car brings the field up to starting speed. Drivers maintain their positions, three cars to a row, 11 rows deep. The pace car pulls off the track and the green flag is out. Parnelli Jones leaps into the lead. The field comes around again, and another car is missing. Mark Malone is in the pit. A second Novi is out of the race. Parnelli Jones pulls steadily away from the rest of the pack. He's really charging. Al Miller moves his Harvey Aluminum Special up through the pack. Jim McElreath and Bobby Marshman spin in the pit. A near catastrophe, but no harm done. Parnelli rushes into his first pit stop. Time is critical, for he must make three pit stops. In a 
exactly 22 seconds, his crew replaces three tires and refuels the car. Parnelli gets new goggles, a drink of water, and a clean windshield. Cross and back to the race. While the big Indianapolis roadsters have had to stop for tires and fuel, Jim Clark in his lightweight Lotus has grabbed the lead. But now he must make his single plan pit stop of the day. The tiny car can run half the race on one set of tires and load of fuel. Will this important advantage be enough to win? Carter has climbed to 12th position as the battle for leadership goes on. The halfway point of the 500 brings disaster to the single remaining Novi entry. Jim Hernandez pulls in with a serious oil leak. One of the most colorful qualifiers in speedway history, Hernandez will not finish this race. In turn one, Dwayne Carter drives his Harvey Aluminum entry into the infield and out of the race. A loose bolt on the track brings to an end a gallant try by a gallant race driver. Now more. 